Great. Uh, good morning. Glad everyone uh, took time to come and visit us today. Um, this morning I was reading an article in the paper and stated that Chief White changed his mind about data collection. So let me set the record straight. I didn't change my mind about data collection. Uh, I was never opposed to data collection. I think, uh, I think what my issue and my concern was that we needed to do it in a way that was effective, that was meaningful, uh, that was productive, uh, and it was something that could be managed within our budget, and it's something that we could do to technology. Uh, with that being said, and realizing the challenges that were associated with that, I had initially suggested that we waited until uh, the state of California, I believe, is mandating uh, that they do data collection, and one of the departments, or one or a couple of the departments there that's doing it uh, has the same record management system that we use. So my preference was to wait until they did it, and we reached out to, to the vendor, by the way, and uh, I'm sorry, right now I can't think of the name of the vendor, but we can get that for you at some point. We reached out to the vendor and asked them if they would be willing to do uh, a similar process as it relates to data collection for us here at the Denver County Police Department, and they expressed some interest in doing that. Uh, uh, but they wanted to deal with the California piece first. And, and knowing that if, in fact, they did that, uh, it would have been done through technology, which would have made it much more efficient in, in, uh, for the officers as it relates to time, and probably more thorough because we've been able to collect all the data at one central location and been able to extract the, the usefulness of the data, and it would have been a lot, of, a lot less expensive. Uh, I think I had stated that at a, at a, a community meeting a couple months ago. But since then, and you know, given, uh, given what has occurred around our nation uh, as it relates to police actions, as it relates to police officers losing their lives, also as it relates to individuals losing their lives at the hand, at the hand of police, not addressing if, any, if it was controversial or not, but the fact that it certainly has uh, gotten my attention and gotten the attention of many, many of our residents in our community and gotten the attention of people around this country. Uh, I had made a decision to say, you know what, I think we need to get in front of the California search, uh, the California effort, which is not to 2018. So I had directed, uh, in, in concert with the Executive Director of Safety, I had directed my staff to start looking at a way that we can collect this data, certainly way prior to 2018. And that's kind of what we're in the process of doing. Questions? What's this going to cost? That's, we're in the process of determining that. I mean, obviously that's one of the, one of the variables, you know. I mean, course is a variable, uh, uh, but what's really kind of important to me and I think what's important to, uh, to, to our residents is we want to collect the right data. Uh, we want it to be meaningful data and we want to make some sense out of it. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm, obviously I'm concerned about the course, but I'm probably more concerned about it being done efficiently, effectively, and timely also. You know, if it's going to take an officer 10 minutes for every stop to, every stop to collect data and, and they're making 20 and 30 stops a day, that's a lot of time being taken away when they should be out there protecting uh, and patrolling those neighborhoods. So that's why the efficiency and the effectiveness part of it is really important to me and why I spoke to that earlier, why I suggested that we wait until uh, uh, California get theirs done and we just piggyback off of off of what they're doing because we had that similar we had the same record management system that will be able to collect that in an efficient effective and a very inexpensive way. Chief can you clarify when you say collect data what, what do you mean who's going to collect the data is it just all officers traffic can you just explain yeah that? what what uh, and, and again this is evolving but what I suspect is certainly all traffic stops or traffic violations or pedestrian stops uh, that, that we have with individuals. Uh, and when I say uh, pedestrian stops or contacts of a suspicious, suspicious nature, now, there have been some that say that we should collect data on every contact that we have and we should be asking for the gender, the sex, the date of birth. So if I have a casual conversation with you uh, on a corner uh, that has nothing to do with any kind of suspicious activity, I don't think it would be in our best interest for me to ask you what your race is, what your date of birth is, what your, what your gender is. That would be offensive. But if it's done under some suspicious activity, uh, then perhaps it would make a little bit more sense. How would you, because I covered a hearing at the legislature, when the, and I think you guys were opposed to that just because of the cost, when they wanted to launch a statewide thing. And one of the things they talked about was, is how do you do that? You can't force people to say, I mean, th like you said, it's offensive for an officer to say to somebody, well, what's your race? So now you're relying on the officers and their judgment. I mean, how 
would you envision maybe a perfect system? Well, well, I, I don't know if it's so much offensive to the officers. I think it might be offensive to the individuals that we're, that we're stopping. But if we're stopping you under suspicious circumstances, it might be more practical to do that. But if I got a group of officers uh, uh, talking to a, a group of young men uh, who's playing basketball in an effort just to kind of communicate and ask each of them that that information that that would be offensive, and I doubt if they would give it. And I and I think it's that's not community policing. It might be uncommunity policing. So it has to be done in the, under the right scenario. So those are the things that we're that we're talking about. I will also tell you, uh, there are departments that that does data collection, and some of them were actually mentioned in the article. Uh, we're going to reach out to every last one of those departments. We're going to. Uh, I have a copy of the of the uh, auditor's report and his thoughts as it relates to data co collection. I'm also a member of the PERF Executive Board, Police Executive Research. They have some thoughts on, exact, on, on data collection. So we're going to reach out to all of those sources uh, and, and put them, uh, and obviously we have some thoughts how it should be done, and look at what they, what they have done. Uh, and when there's some common things that we think that are effective and efficient, uh, that will probably be part of the policy that we generate. And then maybe once we generate this policy, obviously we're going to have to reach out to some, some in the community to say this is where we want to go. So, yeah, I mean, if you have an opinion you want to share, we're willing to listen to what you have to say. Do you envision a situation like, say, I get stopped in a traffic stop and there's a box where the officer then would have to check what they thought my, we're talking race, to, it's race, yeah. sex, I mean, what are you talking, race, yeah. sexual preference, I mean, yeah. what do you? Yeah, I, I, again, it is evolving, but yeah, I, uh, from uh, effective and efficient, it needs to be something that can be done through technology. So the officer can make the traffic stop uh, and then will simply be able to get back into his car and hopefully through his computer, click the box to say, this is where I made the stop, this is why the stop was made, this is the race of the individual, uh, and this is how long the stop took, something along those lines. So will be the officer making the judgment, not necessarily an individual well, disclosing? Well, that's, that's the initial thought, but that very well might change. Again, this is, this is evolving, and, and obviously I need, to, I need to look at some of the other practices, uh, effective practices of data collection that's going on around the country, and, and get the... Uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the perspective of some people that are experts in that field. Uh, uh, and so based on, after collecting that information, uh, my initial thoughts of who should identify the race of an individual versus the officer or the, or the particular individual, that very well might be changed. Colby, yeah, yes, sir. Chief, I know that the department hasn't collected this specific type of data for some time, but what has the department done, if anything, to examine the question of racial bias, uh, you know, since you've been chief at least? Yeah, I mean, we, actually, there there are a lot of, uh, number one, there's a complaint process. Uh, uh, you, you have a monitor who people can go directly to and, and, exp and express concerns. Uh, uh, we monitor officers' behavior. Uh, we have an early warning tracking system that tracks officers' behavior. Uh, what does uh, that track exactly? Uh, it can track anything that you can set it for. It can, it can track accidents. It can track complaints. But for the sake of this conversation, it tracks complaints. Uh, uh, it, it can track the number of stops that officers make. So we do have mechanisms uh, they can monitor what an officer is doing, but they're not done in a centralized location that specifically can focus on stops for traffic stops, for accidents, stops for arrests, uh, and they're all and they're in different locations. So we need to we need to have all this information focalized at one central point so we can do an analysis of it. And Leslie, what if anything do you think that this new data will show? in terms of the idea of bias, bias with well, the department? Th well, that I, that I don't want to comment on, because if I comment on it, someone's going to say that I've already formed a perception. So I, it's going to show the facts. How's that? That might be the best answer. answer. Yes, ma'am. Um, how you doing today? I hadn't seen you in a while. Know, how are you doing? Good. <laughs> um, I apologize if I'm making you repeat yourself, but at what point do you think you'll have enough data to have a meaningful conclusion, and what will that look like? Well, you know? I, I think, obviously, uh, uh, my initial thought was to have this underway by the end of the year, but uh, again, that's going to depend on how much information we get from other other sources. So, why I would like to see it in place by the end of the year, that's that's tentative. Uh, in, in, coll in collecting the data, I think this was done as a young man has stated. I think it was done about ten years ago, and it was over a two-year process. Uh, so, obviously, we're going to have to collect it over some time uh, to, to to validate the accuracy of the information. How long? How long we're going to have to do it to verify its 
if it's, valid, if it's validated or not, that I don't have the answer to, but I suspect that we'll get that also as we can, can gather other information from other sources that have done it uh, more recent than we have. Do you think you would pilot it in one district first to kind of roll it out and see how? Uh, that's a possibility, but I, my preference probably would be to just to do it department-wide. Yeah. Okay. What did you see from California that you're going to model, emulate? How did that work? What, what do you, well, what, actually, what actually, you like and don't like? Well, actually, what, what the thought while I was waiting for California is because the state has mandated it be done in all in law enforcement, okay? Uh, and they gave them, I thought they gave them to 2017, but they actually I think they gave them to 2018, and that's just too in light of all the things that have been occurring and the need for us to be transparent. I don't want to wait, I don't want to wait that long. Uh, uh, but what I really wanted to piggyback from California was I wanted to be able to use the technology that they're using. Maybe not so much what they're collecting, because I don't know what they're going to be collecting. I hadn't taken the time to, re to do that. But I know that they have a, some of those departments have the same record management system that we have. And collecting it through a record management system makes it just that much more efficient and effective. And you can model it in that record management system to do whatever you wanted to, what, to collect whatever you wanted to collect. So that was real. My, that was my real interest for for waiting until California had gotten into place. You said Colorado's mandated that. No, California, California mandated okay, that. Gotcha. Right. Do you have besides the big cities like um, you know New York, L.A., Chicago that are using this? Are there other um, smaller departments? That, that you're sort of looking at? Sure. I, yeah, I'm sure there are, there are smaller departments. And we'll, we'll be looking at a litany of, of departments. I just mentioned those four those, because those four were, were, were mentioned uh, in the article, and one might perceive that it's being done effective and efficient there. That's yet to be known. We're going we're gonna to collect that yeah. uh, as well as collect other departments also, as well as talk to uh, individuals that are pretty much the experts in the field as it, as it, as it relates to that. How do you police better with this? Pardon? How would you police better? How does this help your, as a department? Well, I, first of all, we have to see what the information is saying. And I think the one thing it helps us as it speaks to what I think is critically important, it speaks to transparency. You know, I, I can't say that as a result of this, we're going we're gonna to get a better outcome. I mean, I mean, hopefully the information will show that we're, that we're not doing any, any kind of profiling. But, but I think uh, at the very least, it will speak to the, our commitment to being transparent. And, and if it shows positive, uh, I, I, I think that's a lot of credibility for the department. If it doesn't show favorable, uh, then we have a responsibility to correct it, and I'm 100% committed to correcting it to anyone who, who, uh, who actions might not, might not have been appropriate. Who is going to, in, in terms of the transparency, so is this going to go to sort of like a third party for analysis, or are you guys going to keep the data and release it and analyze it? How uh, that uh, great, great question. Again, uh, we hadn't gotten that far yet. Can you imagine this affecting policing in any way? That the officer on the street is now aware that numbers are being tracked uh, with regard to who he stops, who he encounters, and that he may just be doing his job, but these numbers are going to say that maybe he's targeting an, an ethnicity. Do you have any concerns in that area? Yeah, I mean, and, and, and you know what, that's, that's, a, that's a great point, and uh, I'm not going to say that there, there won't be a handful of officers that might to be of that opinion, but I think if we really explain it, you know, not just explain it to to the media, to the to the public through the media, but explain it to the men and women in our police department, understanding the environment that we're in, understanding the importance of of uh, of, of doing this, uh, I, I would feel comfortable that the great majority will will be on board and understand that. You know, I, you know, I, I got to be honest with you. My my concern is I want to do as little as possible to take away. For, from them being out in that community providing the services. I mean, that's really kind of important. And that's how come I was so locked in on, 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 the, on the California thing, because I know that through a record management system, the timeliness of it, the efficiency of it, and the effectiveness of it. Uh, without that system, there's, there are a lot of challenges, and we're dealing with, we're dealing with them, some of those challenges right now. Uh, but, but again, I, along with the mayor and certainly the executive director of safety, are committed to, at this point that this is something that we need to do. We just got to figure out the most effective way to do it. And Chief, how do you, though, like I said, at the state hearing, they talked about, because it trickles up to the courts to a certain extent. So if you right. change your tickets, then that changes the way they do things over, you know, at the court. I mean, would this have to be an integrated thing, or would this well, maybe, do you see it being sort of just a separate form they fill out? Yeah, and, and, and again, I mean, that speaks okay. to the technology. That's, that's 
part of the challenges that we needed to get, that we needed to get to. I mean, and obviously, I've talked to uh, a couple of legislators when they actually wanted to do it, and and to be honest with you, how they wanted to do it just wasn't practical at the time. So it wasn't that I or I, and I don't need to speak for other police chiefs, but there were other police chiefs that weren't opposed to it. It's just that the way that they wanted to do it just wasn't practical. Uh, so you know, uh, best case scenario, uh, once we get this done, maybe this can be a model. Uh, for others who have a desire to do it in our state. Chief, this may have gone past me, so I apologize, but just for clarification, you, you're leaning toward an officer making that judgment him or herself as opposed to asking the person, I don't know if that would be compulsory for them to answer, which No, no, I'm, I'm uh, initially, because uh, I wanted it to be as non-intrusive as possible on the individual that we're stopping, okay? so. Uh, initially, I, I gave some thought to the officer can form the opinion of what the race of the individual is. But again, uh, I want to get, I want to collect more information from other resources, from other sources that are doing it. And if it proves to be more effective for it to be done, where we ask the individual, then I am not opposed to do that. So again, I mean, really, what I'm sharing with you today is there is a need to do that. And we're committed to doing that. Exactly how we're going to do that, we're still working through the nuances of, of uh, determining the most effective way of doing it. We've had cases in which minorities are stopped. Um, and it's actually happened to me where I, I'll be listed as Caucasian on a ticket or something like that. We backgrounded people where we know they're Hispanic or black, right. and they'll say something else on it. Is there any concern about any inaccuracies yeah. if the officers are the ones? Using you know the discretion. As well, the yeah, and I mean, and that's something that we certainly need to consider, and certainly that it's certainly something that we're gonna that we're gonna weigh in on. Okay, one more question, guys. She's gotta go. I have one. I apologize for, for hogging it, but sort of piggybacking on what he said. How do you reassure? I mean, it would seem to me that certain officers in certain precincts or cars at certain times of the day or night might run into more minority people, more Caucasian people than yeah. others. How do you? ensure that, you know what I mean? And so if you just look at the raw data, you'd be like, oh, no, this guy's terrible. I mean, how do you yeah, well, assure the officers that there'll be fairness? In well, sure. So if I, if, if I have a, a precinct and 80% and, and of the people that are in my precinct is of a, a particular race, it's a good possibility 80% of the stops I'm going to make is going to be of that race. Uh, so that doesn't mean that I'm profiling. So obviously, I mean, us as Managers, I mean, we know where we're signing officers, and we know the, the demographics of the areas that they're working in. Okay, but if I have a precinct, uh, uh, and 80 percent is of a particular race, and I'm stopping only 10 percent of those, and I'm stopping 80 percent of an, of a, another race, then that raises the antenna to say we got to take a little deeper dive in this. I mean, so we know the demographics of where we're signing officers, uh, and and so I so I think we'll be able to do a, a, a fair assessment of exactly what's occurring. And the other thing that's really important also, and I've done data process, uh, data collection in other departments I've worked in before. I mean, not only do we want to see when people are getting stopped and why they're getting stopped, we want to see the outcome of the stop. See, that's really important. I can say that I stopped, I stopped 10 people for the same reasons, but the outcome for this five because of their race is different than the outcome for that five. So that's important also. So we're gonna, I mean, not only do we want to be transparent, but we want to be thorough uh, and, and, and we want it to be meaningful, and we want to be able to attach the incidents to the particular officers that are conducting the behavior. Uh, and whether it's going to take an outside person to, to do that, to, to speak to transparency, I'm not opposed to it. Whether it's something that we should do, uh, I'm not opposed to it. But again, I mean, this is, uh, I think the, the importance of me meeting with you today is there's a commitment to make it happen, and to make it happen sooner, sooner than later, uh, but there's still a lot of unanswered uh, questions uh, that need to be resolved before we can actually uh, unveil it. So that would be likely next year then? Uh, you know, hopefully not, but it, yeah. it might. Again, I just can't speak to I, I gotta see. Right? i got to see what else we're collecting. Cool. Again, hey, I really appreciate everybody's taking time to come. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.